Welcome to the Chef's Kitchen Restaurant Edition. I'm your host, Nicole Gaffney, and we're here today at Nordon Preferred Kitchen Equipment Studios. And joining me today in the kitchen is Chef Victor Bach and Chef Katie Gaffney, no relation. She's the executive pastry chef, and Victor's the executive chef over at the Sands Bethlehem. Thanks for being here today. Thanks Absolutely. for having us. So Katie, you're gonna come make some desserts for us in yes, a little I bit, am. all right? So you'll come join us in a bit, and Chef Victor, we're gonna get started on your dish. Fantastic. Hey, you, chef. Thank you. <laughs> So what are we making today? Well, we're going to do a dish that's going to be inspired. We're looking to uh, create an Emerald Fish House restaurant. Nice. So we want to do everything kind of fish centric. Uh, I have some beautiful snapper that came from the Gulf of Mexico. It's big too. Uh, I'm going to kind of do maybe a Latin Cuban flair to this particular dish. So we will first want to start off with uh, sauteing the snapper. Mm -hmm. We'll get that rolling. A little bit of whole butter in the pan. I notice you have this scored a little bit. Just scored. I want to get the skin nice and crisp. All right. So we will start with a little bit of salt. Pretty generous on the flesh side. And what okay. kind of salt are you using? That's uh, kosher salt. Mm -hmm. Touch of white pepper to that. Oh, that's what I see in there. We'll just do a little bit of fresh milled black pepper as well. Now you said something about doing the Emerald uh, Fish House type restaurant. Is this what you're transitioning from with the current restaurant? Yeah, we have an Emerald Italian table restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to open up another Italian concept on the property, so we're going to convert this over. Uh, I think it should do very, very well. Obviously, uh, Emerald, his name is much more known for, for seafood as well. Definitely. So we'll start this skin side down like I mentioned before. You can always already see that starting to kind of curl and puff up. Okay, if you want to get rid of that Thanks. for me, please. And the next dish that's going to accompany this, it's called uh, mafungo, which um, there's a dish very similar in Northern Africa called fufu, but it's a kind of a peasant type dish. It's made with green plantains. Mm -hmm. Uh, sort of like our version of mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, that sort of thing. I've made it several times with yams, potatoes, and even carrots. Oh, so cool. what we're going to do, let's go with a little bit of butter. Nice and hot. These generous, get really hot here. generous amount of onions here. Okay. Again, generous amount of garlic. And then it's kind of once these are sweated a little bit translucent, add your plantains. And it's really important to have a green plantain here and not the Yeah, nothing the too ripe, yellow. yeah. So this will cook down. And it, the, the, the plantain itself has sort of a natural starch component, not quite that of a potato, certainly. Um, but it works very well. And as this cooks down, now we want to lightly saute these ingredients. Now I have a, a, a finished uh, mixture already made. So mm -hmm. what we'll do is to this, is a little bit of chicken stock, uh, just a touch of cinnamon. Oh, interesting. It's kind of that Caribbean flavor. Correct. We have some dried peppers. Spicy? And, uh, they're a little bit spicy yeah. on this end, so we're going to finish this with some sugar. Mm-hmm. Kind of balance uh, out that heat. Correct. Okay. So like I said, we'll put this on the back burner of the stove, and what you're going to have once you're finished is a mixture mm. that looks like such. How long does that take to cook down? This took probably about 40, 45 minutes okay. uh, over medium high heat. You got to stir it generally as the plantains start to break down. That starchy component mm. can stick to the bottom of the pan. So just be uh, conscious of stirring that. So to finish what we would then do is a little bit of uh, scallions. I added mint cilantro and a little bit of lime zest wow. to this finished product. A lot of flavor so in there. Very, very flavorful. Again, nice blends of sweet and spice to go with that, okay? Let's see how our snapper is doing here. Yep, very good. Where did you find inspiration for this dish? I was actually in Florida last week, yeah. so I, I ate at a lot of seafood restaurants, and uh, mm -hmm. you know we're very excited about the new change in the Emerald uh, restaurants at the property, so uh, this is another thing that we can kind of dovetail on it. Stay tuned for more from the Chef's Kitchen Restaurant Edition. Nordam, it's fantastic. There's a lot of space, it's high-tech equipment. The ovens are phenomenal. I can't wait to own one. The last ingredient, okay. which is really quick, is going to be garnished uh, with a pickled uh, red onion salad. Mm. So again, already julienne fine red onions. You want to do a little bit of salt, much like you would do sort of a coleslaw concept. You know, you want to have that slightly wilted piece to that. Mm -hmm. A little bit of sugar to bring that out. Uh, I have a little sherry vinegar. I love sherry vinegar. Lime zest. Some fresh lime zest. 
You know, and the components with a lot of dishes that you see down there because of the, the great influence is, you know, you have a lot of Peruvian restaurants yes. and ceviche and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So that acid piece, uh, in this case, lime, comes in very, very uh, handy with that. So if you want to mix that around Perfect. just a little bit. Check our snapper's looking good. We'll let this uh, red pepper marinate just a little bit to wilt. We'll right. go ahead and uh, put some julienne red peppers. Uh, some julienne mangoes. Mm. So if you want to mix that around, what we'll do when we go to plate, we'll finish that with some fresh arugula, some cilantro, and some toasted almonds. Great. Now you mentioned you have a new Italian restaurant opening up. Can you tell me a little more about that? Uh, we do. It's uh, we, we partner with uh, Buddy Velastro, the cake, the cake boss. boss. So uh, he has a uh, Buddy V's restaurant. It's uh, a southern family style Italian restaurant. So we're really excited about have that. Cool. Uh, I think our market and our customers will love that. Definitely. So the snapper is just about ready. Beautiful. Great. A little bit crispy skin. skin. So yeah. what we're going to do just to finish this, I have these are uh, called piopini mushrooms. Mm. Uh, not really indigenous to that part of the country. I just love the nutty flavor that they uh, give off. So we're going to garnish the plate with just a little bit of those. And we also have uh, some already poached lobster meat mm. that we will add also. I love lobster meat. And you've done a lot of different renovations over at the Sands Bethlehem also. We are. We're, we're in the midst of uh, a complete hotel renovation with all of our guest rooms, uh, two different restaurants. I'm adding a banquet kitchen on my side. Excellent. So we're really excited about some of the changes here. So, all right. Now, because the, the mushrooms take very little time to cook, the, the lobster is already cooked. Just want to gently season that a little bit and we are about there. I like to cook my fish medium. This is gonna be the sauce. This is a uh, coconut sauce made with poblano peppers. Oh. Uh, it's gonna balance out, I think, very nicely. It starts off sweet, finishes pretty spicy on yeah. the back end of that. So you can regulate that by a little bit more sugar, a little bit more coconut. Mm -hmm. So to do that, I've already gone ahead. I have some uh, grilled roasted peeled poblano peppers. Uh, if you have like an immersion blender, this works great. Immersion blenders are awesome. Uh, Coconut milk. And that's really thick. Did you just use the cream portion of that? Correct, I did. All right. Okay, so again, a little bit of sugar to sweeten that up. Once again, do some lime zest and the juice of at least one lime. Kind of brighten that right up. Yep. What you will have is a sauce here that has, you know, kind of loose applesauce type consistency mm -hmm. to it. So it's got uh, like an avocado type color to it. It also. does. The poblano, uh, poblano peppers, once they're roasted, work out really great. So uh, I think we're just about ready here. We ready to plate? I believe so. I'll go grab it. Now, if you want to. These are just some orange segments? Yeah, just did a little bit of that, keep the citrus mm -hmm. uh, into that. If you want to go ahead and gently mix this. It's almost like a cilantro salad. Correct. I like that. All right. So fresh. A little pinch of salt. All right. So you want to cook this down, like I said, you can see here, it's, it's a little bit thick, mm -hmm. uh, lumpy mashed potatoes, if you would, type consistency. It smells great. Um, oh, the lobster and that nutty brown butter, yum. Just a couple mushrooms with the lobster. All right. So again, once you taste this sauce, you understand why this salad will come in great because it'll have a nice sort of refreshing flavor to it. Really makes the whole dish pop too. It should, it yeah. should. So as I mentioned, we can just garner it with a, a wee bit of citrus sections. This is a great dish, so pretty. And there you have it, Cuban style snapper. <laughs> and is with, this on the menu? Uh, the menu's in development right All now, right. so we're playing around with a lot of dishes and running for specials. Poblano coconut sauce. Stay tuned for more from Nordon Preferred Kitchen Equipment. 
this is my first time at Nordon and it's been an absolutely incredible experience. The equipment is top notch from the induction burners to this, I mean, the stove gave up off incredible heat, but wasn't hot to me. This deck oven is beautiful. I mean, a plancha, the variety of, of products that they have is incredible. And I'll bring this over to the tasting table. And then why don't we bring out our executive pastry chef, Kate Gaffney, KD, excuse me. All right, so what kind of yummy stuff do you have in store for so us? So right now we're going to work on our chocolate espresso cake pops, mm -hmm. which is actually a current dessert menu item at Chop House. Fantastic. Um, so right here we just have some dark chocolate that I've melted with just a tiny bit of vegetable oil, which kind of helps give the chocolate, instead of that snap that you normally get from a tempered chocolate, this will be a bite and it won't shatter and ruin a patron's dress. Nice. So, That's always uh, important to note. So this is actually made with a chocolate flourless cake that mm -hmm. has a little bit of espresso powder in it just to kind of amplify mm. that chocolate chocolate flavor. Um, very simple recipe. It's literally just chocolate, butter, sugar, and eggs. So these work best if you make the cake, roll out the balls, stick the little sticks in, and then if we set them in the freezer, just so they can get All nice right. and hard. And that way you don't have to worry about losing a chocolate ball in your bowl of chocolate. Okay. Which is going fishing for a bo uh, chocolate <laughs> ball isn't always the most fun. So I'm just going to kind of swirl the cake pop in the chocolate, making sure I'm not going to get the stick dirty, just because it doesn't right. look very nice. This is fun. Yeah. Do you love your job? I do love my job. <laughs> I can see why. Yeah. So notice the rest of it. And then this will probably just set in about four to five minutes. If you're in a rush, you can always just pop them in the fridge. Nice. They'll cool down faster that way. So then once the chocolate is set, I'll show you the technique for striping them with some white chocolate, which, you know, kind of just adds a level of jazziness. Yeah, that, we like jazziness yeah. around the chef's Desser kitchen. Desserts, I feel like, should always be a little bit fun and kind of whimsical, you know? I love that. And this is, the whole idea behind this dessert was, you know, after having a big meal at the chop house, you're so full, mm -hmm. but you just want that one little bite of chocolate yes. just to kind of finish everything off. So Leave that sweetness mm -hmm. in your mouth. So this is some melted white chocolate, and I made this little paper cone, so it has a really nice kind of thin point to it. Mm -hmm. um, just warm it up a little bit. So I'll squeeze out just a little bit. Kind of have to play with it a little bit. Yeah, just have to warm it up just a little bit. So then the trick to getting nice thin lines is just to move your wrist quickly back and forth. And I kind of like the more minimalist, less is more kind mm -hmm. of approach. Just a little hint just kind of gives it a nice little flair. Makes it looks it, great. Makes it look really pretty. And are you using just a slight pressure with your fingers? Yes. Again, nice dainty lines. But <laughs> They're very dainty. They look great. <laughs> So the next dessert that we're going to work on is our, oh, oh sorry, do we want to take this? Yep. So these are our red velvet cake. People um, love it. Traditionally, it was made with a roux-based frosting, oh. uh, which is kind of like thick, very light, fluffy. I prefer cream cheese frosting. Oh, who doesn't? Because I, I love cream <laughs> cheese. Okay, it's delicious. Right. So this uh, red velvet cake, I actually baked in this sheet tray. And then using a heart-shaped cookie cutter, I just punched out little heart cake sandwiches. Um, one trick for making sure that you have nice, clean edges around your cake is if you spray this cookie cutter with a little bit of Vegeline. Ah. Or pan spray, you know, just yeah. helps, helps it kind of have a much cleaner edge. Nice. And then I'm using a fluted tip just to kind of right. give it a little bit more decoration around the side. Mm -hmm. So I start in the center, and I'm just going to kind of go out to the corners, just like that. All right. And then just match up a nice little cake. So cute. Rest it upon there. Now, Victor, is dessert a really big seller over at the Chop House? Or I, I mean, it is. And Katie's done a great job kind of bridging that gap with you know, nothing that's too fancy. At the end of the day, people like that comfort food type oh, dessert. Totally. Um, we try to really emphasize on just technique and, and, and mm -hmm. executing that. Anything from uh, pear, apple crisps type dessert this time oh. of the year. Uh, obviously, what she alluded to is uh, the trio dessert that she's preparing today. One is a menu item. This we will feature uh, during Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And the next item, and I'll let Katie talk more about it, is uh, for the last several years, uh, the Sands property and Emerald have paired with the Girl Scouts to do different uh, features with Girl Scout cookies and come up with some specialty recipes that we awesome. do in-house. Yeah. I was a Girl Scout. <laughs> so was I. <laughs> so then you can do several little different kinds of dec decorating te uh, techniques. You can do just some nice little lines. And this is with the white chocolate again, just like yes, you did with the Yes, this is white pop. chocolate again. Cool. Who wouldn't want to eat this? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Sometimes you can do some little polka dots. You know, this is a kind of a fun thing too that you know you could do with your kids. Yeah, definitely. 
the whole inspiration behind these was, you know, conversation hearts. So if you wanted to yeah. write a little message to your sweetheart, whoever that is, <laughs> it's a good thing to do. Oh, that's really fun. And how long will the white chocolate stay liquefied in there? Will you have to warm this that will, back up? I mean, technically, I'll, I'll warm it up. Usually just keep, keep it in a warm space. Mm -hmm. uh, white chocolate has a pretty low melting point, so as long as it's above 80 degrees, it should stay liquid for you. All right, cool. And then these can just get popped in the fridge until they're ready to serve, and then pull them out and enjoy. Gorgeous. Stay tuned for more from the Chef's Kitchen Restaurant Edition. Cooking in Nordon is one of the, my most favorite things that I get to do when I get invited to the show, just because the equipment is so fantastic and they pretty much have everything you could possibly dream of as a chef. Now this is really cool, I'm excited yeah, for this. Yeah, so this was inspired by the Caramel Delight cookie, which was my favorite Girl Scout cookie. I believe they're now called Samoa cookies. But um, I did a little competition between all the pastry cooks in the department to see who could come up with the best idea for making it for this event. Um, so one girl said to me, well, what if we did a dessert sushi? And I said, well, that sounds really cool. I really." So what we came up with is we using a short grain rice, mm -hmm. either sushi rice or risotto rice mm -hmm. is best for this, um, this coconut sticky kind of pudding. So you want to cook it almost till it's about a rice pudding consistency. So this is just sugar, coconut milk, the water, and the short grain yes. rice. Uh, when you're working with sushi, one thing you really want to make sure is that your hands are nice and wet, just because the rice is very sticky. Yeah, you can see how sticky yeah. it is. <laughs> so he's going to kind of press it down. And not all that different from sushi rice either. No, it's very, it's pretty much the same thing. It yeah. just, you know, has that flavor of coconut and sweet. And it, it is sweetened. You have sugar yes, in there. Yes, there is sugar in here. This is just plain so chocolate? So that is actually a chocolate coconut ganache. So that Ooh. is been flavored with cream as well as coconut rum and some toasted coconut. Oh, that sounds awesome. I would eat that plain. <laughs> <laughs> so then I have, this is a soft caramel that I've made that oh. I just cut into strips. You can see the vanilla bean floating yes. in there too. Love vanilla. Yes. So I'm just going to make a nice little line. Little pieces together. And is this something that's currently on the menu? This is not. This is just a, a special that we were doing for the Girl Scouts mm -hmm. of America charity event. Cool. Then I take our pineapple strips. So then we have our coconut chocolate ganache. And I have to say too, this is my favorite kind of Girl Scout cookie. Yeah. So you're I mean, already winning. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of chocolate in there. Yeah. So one thing to remember when you're rolling sushi is you don't want to roll it too tight. Mm -hmm. So then I'm going to roll up and I use my fingers to kind of hold everything together. I'm putting down pressure using the mat to kind of do most of the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to roll forward. Squeezing out kind of any air bubbles that might have formed, but not too much pressure. And then I'll take the plastic wrap and just roll it up. Can I try and do one? <laughs> sure. <laughs> this looks really fun. Absolutely. So let's grab a piece of plastic wrap from down here. Let's tuck it under the edges. All right. Okay, yeah. so wet my fingers. Yep, get your fingers nice and wet. I'm going to start with the rice. There you go. And tell me if I'm doing anything wrong. <laughs> no, that looks good. I mean... Caramel first? Yep, put okay. the caramel down first. Oh, I love caramel. And we're just kind of doing these in the, right in the center. Yep. I like to leave just like a little bit of a gap from, if you're going to roll, you can roll it either from the top or the bottom. Okay. It's just whichever way you're going to roll, I like to just leave about like two fingers space just to give a chance for the rice to kind of go over the filling so you don't have any explosions. All right. <laughs> no. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, so, so just wrap it up and hold on to your fillings to make sure they don't go. There you go, and just roll on forward. There you go. And then just pull it back just a little bit and just tighten it. Kind of tuck it under. Yep. The final element of the Caramel Delight cookie is the toasted coconut and the oh, shortbread yeah. crumbs. So I'm just going to roll. Sushi roll. And you really want to make sure all that sushi rice oh, gets yeah. covered up. Oh, yeah. Get it in there. So then when you're cutting sushi, I'm going to start in the middle. 
So you might want to make a nice even piece. So then you have a clean edge and a clean edge. So cool. And then I'm just going to keep cutting in the middle until it becomes the length that I'm looking for. It's a fun little play on a Girl Scout cookie. Yeah, what a great concept. Yep. And then to finish it, we have our house-made caramel and chocolate sauce. This is so great. <laughs> well, why don't we get over to our tasting Absolutely. table and dig in? See, I'm going to try mm. this sauce. Ooh, I love lobster. I'm very excited to try the mofongo, too. Oh, yeah, I have to get some lobster in there. Mmm. Got a nice spiciness to mm. it. This was great. I know. But I, I'm all yeah, after the dessert. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't even know what I should start with first. I don't know. Should we just go for cake pop? Yeah, I'm okay. thinking cake pop. Yeah. Oh my god. It's pretty rich. <laughs> mm hmm And I have to try the sushi too. This yeah. is so fun. I love that. And now we have to go for the red velvet. Yes. Very intense red velvet. Mm hmm Love that cream cheese frosting. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was so wonderful to have both of you here. Thank I hope you. you enjoyed cooking with us at Nordon. Thanks for having us. We would love to have you back again soon. Appreciate it. See you over at the sand. Nordon is special because we have everything in house under one roof. So when somebody sees a brochure, they come to Nordon and Nordon brings it to life. The equipment is so fantastic and they pretty much have everything you could possibly dream of as a chef. The typical Nordon customer comes to us for equipment expertise. The equipment is Top notch, the variety of products that they have is incredible. When you come here and I see four things that I want or need. If you need something in the Philadelphia, Delaware Valley area, Nordon is your number one choice. You won't be disappointed. The people here at Nordon have been fantastic. Uh, really impressed with the kitchen. Uh, some of the equipment they offer, it's uh, a chef's dream. I mean, it's been absolutely amazing. This is my first time being on food television and, you know, being up here in this text kitchen, it's really nice. 